Hi everybody. So in this video we're going to go over the solar system exercise to talk about hierarchies. And basically we're going to set up the solar system and we're going to start with a polygon sphere that's going to be our sun. And we're going to go ahead and call it the sun right there. And uh, I'm going to make all our planets using cubes instead of spheres. And you can see here, as I toggle between wireframe and shaded view, the cube is in the middle of my sun at the origin. So I'll go into the move tool and then I'll move it out. Let's go back to my shaded view and we'll make the cube smaller, which is scale, uh, also R on your keyboard. And let's make that a little smaller and we'll call that Mercury. And that's our first planet. Now we want the planet to spin around its own axis. So we will be animating its rotations. So let's go to frame one. We'll do 120 frame clip. So we'll start at frame one and I want to keyframe the rotation X, Y, and Z. We'll go into rotation. To keyframe these, I'm going to highlight them in the channel box like this, and then I'll right click and go key selected. You'll notice that it turns red here. Red denotes that the selected object has keyframes for those attributes. And you'll see a little red tick mark over here. So I've set the value for how I want it to be oriented at frame one. I'll go to frame 120, and I'm going to spin Mercury around a whole bunch. Notice that the rotate Y number is changing. Uh, you may want to angle yourself a little bit above the planet to make it a little easier to spin. And once I've done that, again, I'm at frame 120. That's my new value. I'm going to right click on those three and key select it as well. And really the only thing that's really changed is rotate Y, but I'm keyframing all three of these just in case your axis might be different than mine. Um, so now we've got Mercury spinning on its own axis. And if I hit play, notice how fast it's playing back. So we want to set the animation preferences. That's this icon down here, the orange person running from the gear. And in the playback section of where it opens, we want to make sure that playback speed is set 24 frames per second. Now when I hit play, it'll play at speed and it'll be five seconds long. That's 120 frames. Okay, so let's do this again. We're going to create another planet and you can't see it, but it's there and I'm just going to move it. So W for move and R for scale and we'll shimmy this up over here and this is going to be called Venus. And we'll do the same thing, right? So at frame one, we'll keyframe its rotations. And that at frame 120, we'll spin Venus around a whole bunch. Again, you might want to put your vantage point to make it easier to spin. And then key it. So now we've got both of these planets spinning on their own axis. Uh, let's do one more. Let's do the Earth. Again, W4 move. And then we'll get this one. Get this one smaller. And we will call this the Earth. And we'll do the same thing, right? We're going to spin it on its own axis. So at frame one, I'm going to keyframe all three of its rotations. And then we'll go to frame 120 and I'll spin the earth around uh, and there we go and I'll key that. So now I've got all three planets spinning on their own axes. Perfect. Now we want to get the planets to go around the Sun to orbit the Sun and there are a few different ways of doing that but this is about hierarchies and understanding grouping and how things work in the outliner with 
inheriting motions and stuff like that. So let's start with Mercury. Now, as we uh, uh, saw earlier in, in grouping is when you take a couple of objects, like let's do this, uh, these two objects. If I take these two objects and I group them together, they will be fit into a new container. So if I click Edit Group, there's the cone, there's the cylinder, and then there's this group that has both of them in there. So this is one object, two objects, three objects. So now this is a three different objects with the group being the parent. So where the group goes, they both go together. Where one of them goes is fine. Where the other goes is fine. But where the group goes, they both go, regardless of their own independent movement. And you may notice that when you create a group, its pivot point, let's undo this, its pivot point shows up at the origin. So I'm going to undo the group all the way back to the beginning. So we just have these two objects, no group. When I go edit group, the group has its own pivot point. And whenever you group something, it, that group's pivot point always shows up at the origin, which is terrific for us because it's right at the center of the sun. So that's how grouping works. And whatever you do to the group, its movement is inherited down the chain to its children. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that group. And we're going to use grouping to be able to move Mercury around the sun. Now, you might think, well, yeah, let's group it to the sun. But actually, you can group a single object. You don't have to group multiple objects together. You can group just one thing by itself. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Edit. Let's tear this off, move it over here. And I'm going to click Group. And that's going to create a group of one. Watch what happens in the Outliner. Okay. There it is. There's Mercury with its pivot point at the center of Mercury. And then the group node with its new, uh, with its pivot point at the origin, which is perfectly in the middle of the sun where we want it because we want this behavior, right? So I'll undo that. So let's call this group Mercury Orbit Group. With groups, notice when I click on Mercury, it selects Mercury and not the group. With groups, you want to typically select them through the outliner, and that's what I'm going to do here. So the animation on Mercury is still exactly the way it was, but now it just has a parent group node above it, and I can compound its movement. So let's do that. I'm going to select the group in the outliner, not this, but this. I'm going to make sure I'm at frame one, and I'm going to keyframe the rotations of this new group node that is the parent of my Mercury. So we'll key select it, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll go to frame 120, and I'll hit E for rotate, and I'll swing Mercury around about one revolution around the sun. And I'll keyframe that. So really what I've got here are two different animations. An animation on Mercury itself and an animation on the parent group node above Mercury where its pivot point is in the center of the sun. And what that gives us is a compounding of movement. Okay, so I'm gonna do this again for V, uh, for Venus, just to reinforce. So I'll grab Venus, edit group to create that group. Okay, there's Venus, there's the group, and I'll call this Venus Orbit Group. And again, its pivot point is right where I want it. Venus's own animation is unchanged. There's the group node. I'm at frame one. I'm going to keyframe the rotations 
for the group node. I'll go to frame 120. I'll spin Venus around about one rotation around the sun. And I'll key it at 120. So now we've got this movement. Now let's do it again with the Earth. And then with the Earth, I'm also going to add a moon. So let's start with just doing the Earth. The Earth has its own rotations already. We'll group it by itself. Right, there's the Earth. There's my Earth orbit group. And again, the group pivot point is where we want it. So I'm going to keyframe the rotations at frame 1. And then I'll go to 120, and I'll swing the Earth around the sun about once. And I'll keyframe that. So now I've got all three planets spinning on their own axis, as well as orbiting around the sun. Now let's add a moon. I want to put a moon that goes around the Earth and also follows the Earth around the sun. So let's create a new box. And let's make that smaller. Let's get in a little bit. Now, keep in mind, I'm keeping everything on the x-axis. It just makes things a little simpler to set up and do in the beginning. But there's my moon. Let's call this moon. And the moon is going to spin around its own axis. So at frame 1, I'm going to keyframe the rotations for the moon. And then I'm going to pretend I'm going to pretend not to see the other planets moving. So just ignore the other planets. So the moon needs to rotate 120 is my frame number and I'll spin it around its own axis a whole bunch and keyframe that at frame 120. All right. So that's fine. Now let's have the moon orbit around the Earth. We'll do the same thing that we did with the planets going around the sun. We're going to create a new group with just the moon in it. So with only the moon selected, let's go to frame one and we'll go edit group. And we'll call this moon orbit group. Again, I'm double clicking inside the outliner to change the names. All right, so there's there's the moon and there's the moon orbit group. Where should the pivot point be? If we're going to be going around the Earth, the pivot point should be at the center of the Earth, right? So let's move the pivot point. To move a pivot point, I like to go into the Move tool first. And then I press D, D's in dog, to go into and out of pivot mode. So I'll press D. There's pivot mode. I'm going to grab my red axis. And I'm just going to eyeball this to about the middle of where the Earth is right now. Obviously, the Earth is going to move, but that's OK. We don't need to worry about that just yet. I'll press D to get out of the pivot. And that's where the orbit, so the moon's pivot point is right in the middle of the moon. And the moon orbit pivot is now at the center of the Earth. Terrific. Let's keyframe it, right? So frame one. We'll keyframe the moon orbit at rotations of zero. And then we're going to pretend the Earth is still here because, you know, that's where our pivot point is. We'll get it to follow the Earth in, in, in just a minute. But for now, we're going to pretend and we're going to spin the moon around the Earth a whole bunch and keyframe it just like we did with the other orbit groups going around the sun. So now it's going to look like this. So the Earth is doing great, but obviously it's not following the Earth. And there's going to be a cataclysmic collision somewhere around here. So let's go back to frame one, where everything is lined up. And what I want to do is I want to be able to take my moon orbit group and I want it to inherit what the Earth orbit group is doing. This node, the Earth orbit group, that is what's responsible 
for taking the Earth around the Sun. So I want to be able to inherit that movement. So again, I'll go to frame one where everything's lined up. And I'm going to take the moon orbit group and I need to make it a child of the Earth orbit group. Now to do that, we're not going to be creating a new group. I don't need a new group. I just need this one to feed its information down to this one. So this needs to be a child of that. In the outliner, to do that, you want to select the moon orbit group and using the middle mouse button. Again, I'm clicking the middle mouse button. You'll notice a little plus symbol showing up at the cursor. And that's going to allow me to reposition that selected node. And if I highlight on top of Earth orbit group, not like this, not like that, but like this, it's going to make it a child of the Earth orbit group. So the Earth orbit group now has the Earth as a, one of the children, obviously. And now the Moon orbit group is also one of its children. And the Moon is a grandchild. So when I hit play, it will follow along with the Earth. And that's the basics of hierarchy and of inheriting motion. Motion inherits downstream. So by proper grouping, we're able to get things to follow each other easy peasy. The idea for, uh, for this to work is repetition. So go ahead and make more of the planets all the way out to Pluto, because Pluto deserves to still be involved as a planet and maybe one maybe two moons for all the other planets to get this to cement in because it's a fundamental foundational understanding in Maya animation CG animation in general but especially with Maya hierarchies are very important this is the hierarchy you want to see for all your other planets Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, um, Pluto, I forget the rest, but uh, Uranus, all the way out to the edge. And that, once you get out to the end of the solar system, you're really going to understand this project. Now let's zhuzh it up a little bit. Let's add a little bit of jazz by creating new colors. So each of these objects, if you go into the attribute editor, you'll see has an existing gray material. In this case, it's called Lambert 1. They all have Lambert 1. You don't want to change this because this will change everything. This is the default material that is assigned to every new object that is created inside of Maya. So you want to leave Lambert 1 alone. In newer versions of Maya, it might be the standard surface uh, material and not Lambert 1, but leave it alone because it's assigned to everything. So for different colors, we want different materials. We want a different type of material for each and every different color that we want. So I'm going to open up the material editor. In Maya, it is called the Hypershade. It's this icon here, or you can go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And that opens up a big window like this. And there's the Lambert one. That's the common material for all objects in the seed. You don't want to mess with that one. So because we're going to be rendering with Arnold a little bit later on, let's go straight to using the AI standard surface material. That is the basic um, material for Arnold rendering. It's a great material, works really well. So if you start typing in AISST, it'll filter and you'll find it much easier. AI standard surface. So in the hypershade in this create section, I'm going to click on standard surface and that's going to create a new material here in the work area, the little sandbox where I can connect things together. And you can see 
up here in the inventory panel the existing materials I have. These four are default to all Miocenes. You can, you can ignore them. So here's the new one. If I select it, I can adjust its parameters here in the property editor inside the hypershade or in the attribute editor over here in the main UI. It doesn't make a difference. They're both the same. So if I click on the color swatch, let's go with kind of an reddish orange because I'm going to assign that to the sun. So I've made the material. Now I want to assign it. And I'm going to do that using the middle mouse button. Right, so I'm going to click with the middle mouse button. I'm going to drag the material from the hypershade to my object. And there you go. There's my orange. So let's do another one. I'll make another AI standard surface. And let's make this one uh, yellow. Bright, bright yellow. Right, and then I'm going to assign that to Mercury. And let's make another one. And let's make this one. Um, let's make this one pink and assign it to Venus. We'll make another one. And we'll make this one uh, blue and we'll assign that to the Earth. And we'll make another one. So you're basically making a material for every color that you want. And let's make this one just red and assign this to the moon. So each one of these represents a different material, which represents a different object. You can have one material on several objects. Like for example, I, I'll take this blue one and put it on the sun. Now these two objects share the same material. Well, let's go back to orange. And there we go. That's the basics. And I would recommend that you do more of the planets to understand this hierarchy system.